Hello and welcome to our evening session. You should just stay, just keep practicing, it's better for you. So we often talk about the, uh, the sorts of things we're looking for in insight meditation practice. How we're looking to understand impermanence, suffering, non-self, to cultivate insight and understanding about reality deeper than before. What we should find, what we're looking for in the practice. At the same time, we need also to be aware of the things that we're not looking for, those things that are a distraction from the practice. So we call these the vipassanupakilesa, the imperfections of insight. They're not bad, they're not unwholesome. Well, most of them aren't, but uh, they're distracting. They take you away from your investigation, your objective observation of reality. So we have to be aware of what these are and we have to be mindful of them when they come up. The first one is called Obasa. It's uh, this interesting phenomenon that occurs when you meditate to begin to see things. It's not just mental images. You actually really see lights, colors, pictures, a lot of strange things. For some meditators, even though their eyes will close, it'll feel like the room has suddenly become brighter like uh, the door is open it's a common one a meditator will be in their hut in the forest and suddenly they'll get they'll s see bright light and it'll feel like someone is or the door has swung open and they'll actually open their eyes to look some it feels like the the roof is, has disappeared and the sun is pouring down the bright light like this brightness Some people will see colors or pic or pictures. It can be quite distracting, and for some people, uh, a, a, a um, not just a distraction, but will be misunderstood as being a part of the path. So for some people, they'll see lights and colors and pictures and want to investigate them. That really goes with all uh, goes for all of ten of these, the vipassana So they're things that are not bad per se, but they're not the path. And if you mistake them, if you get caught up in them, they'll take you off the path. This one comes for some people, it comes for people who have strong concentration. For others, they might never see anything. It's not obviously not what we're looking for. It's a distraction. 
when you see, you have to note to yourself seeing, seeing whatever you see, no matter how long you see it for. An important theme here is that none of this is any special. It's all just experience. It comes and it goes. There's nothing special about seeing things. When you take it as special, you lose track of what's really important, and that's cultivating insight and understanding. The second one is piti. Piti can come in many different forms. Uh, for some people, it's uh, rushes of energy through their body. For some people, it'll be crying. They'll just cry for an hour or two hours even. Well, cry, cry for a long time anyway. For some, it's laughing or, or yawning or that kind of thing. That's somewhat rare, but it does happen. A common one is um, a common one is feeling very light. Your whole body might feel light, and you feel as if you're floating. Some people apparently do actually float. It's apparently possible. I'm sure scientists would beg to differ, but meditators have have uh, reported that they've actually levitated off their pillows. So if it ever happens to you, you should you're you're supposed to keep a, a pencil or a pen by your your uh, sitting mat, so that if you float up, then float all the way to the ceiling, make a mark on the ceiling just to prove that you were there. And there was one guy who actually did this, so I don't know. At any rate, it's quite common for there to be a feeling of floating. Another really common one is this swaying where you rock back and forth. You feel your body rocking. When I first did my course, my body was really strongly rocking, rocking. I thought, oh, this is fun. <laughs> it's easy to, to sit for a long time that way. You get into this, this uh, pattern but you 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 aren't able to see suffering you're not able to see things clearly because you're enjoying it there's a pleasure associated with the rocking so I went to my teacher and he wasn't, <laughs> wasn't too happy but these aren't bad things but they're distracting and if you don't stop them this one Ajat Lumpo Chodok this guy in Bangkok he's a this very famous teacher he said, if it doesn't stop, you have to tell it to stop. You have to say, stop. He says, what does he say? Kile ko du. Kile, this kile says, or du, du means stubborn. The defilements are stubborn. So we have, uh, we have then Pasadi, the next one. Or maybe these aren't in order, but Pasadi is another one. Pasadi is, is calm or quiet. Pasadi is quiet. So up until this point, especially right before these begin to arise, the mind will have been tortured and chaotic, and then suddenly the mind calms down, quiets down. This is a common one for those of you who aren't practicing in our tradition. This is a common one, if you're meditating on your own, to, it's a common one to fall into, because you get to a very quiet state and you don't know how to proceed further. This quiet state is about the, the limit of samatha meditation. So without guidance in vipassana meditation, you get stuck there. And so I've often given talks in places where people practice meditation and someone would ask this question, what do you do when you feel very calm or no, feel very quiet? Like there's just nothing, nothing to note, nothing to be mindful of. Well, then simply you would note quiet, quiet. So I've often instructed in this way and it's really um, 
inspiring to see people be able to get past that by noting quiet, quiet. And then, of course, the mind starts up again because they get out of this. The thing about these um, these states is they become sort of like a broken record where you get stuck in them. So when you pull out of them, you get back into a more ordinary state. And then we have Sukha and Upeka. So Sukha, some people feel very happy. Intense bliss. Well, that's a good thing, right? There's nothing wrong with bliss or happiness. The problem is we become caught up in it. A meditator isn't mindful. It doesn't say to themselves, happy, happy. Or if they feel calm, equanimous, then they, would, if they don't say calm, calm. And they'll get caught up in it. And then they can get lost in it. And they won't progress. I knew a monk once. I still know him, but I haven't seen him in a long time. Totally and, and unabashedly, unashamedly addicted to happiness. And he'd find any way. He, he ended up getting a... Not ended up when I first met him. He 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 had this uh, he had a, st a CD player and he would play Pink Floyd or something. When he meditated, he would pay, play some very all sorts of different kinds of music. Even I think, which is not really allowed for monks. And he'd put on these big headphones and he'd just lie there and meditate or sit there. He's actually a very strong meditator. He's this guy who could sit rigid for with a huge smile on his face <laughs> for hours I'm not too sure he got into insight nowadays he does yoga I think so I don't know Then we have jnana. Jnana, I think, comes earlier, but jnana is knowledge. This is a common one. It's not usually that difficult for meditators, but it can be distracting nonetheless. Jnana means knowledge about any number of things. It could be worldly knowledge. You're able to figure out all your problems in life, come up with all sorts of plans and solutions. And I had one guy who came up with a, a perfect business plan. <laughs> He started to do a meditation course and he just said he'd come up with the perfect business plan and he said in five years he was de he was sure to be a millionaire or billionaire or whatever, millionaire I guess. And he said in five years I'll come back and, and I'll buy you or you know, build you all these, build you a meditation. You know, he made me all these promises and I tried to keep him, tried to get him to stay and he left and I never saw him again. I'm pretty sure he never became a millionaire. Although if he did and he's listening out there, you owe me some goodies. Not, not likely. You get caught up. It's very easy to get caught up in the mind because you're all alone. and Reality. You get caught. You get pulled away from reality. You end up in fantasy, solving all your problems only to find that the solutions don't pan out in reality. But whether they do or they don't is not the point there. This is not the practice. This gets you away from the practice. Jnana. And then we have Pagaha, which is energy. 
Pagaha means very strong energy. Pagaha is a good word. A very strong energy. This one comes in to various degrees. It's only, I mean, these things are, all, many of them are only a problem for certain people. I always tell this story about this woman who just couldn't stop herself. She just, in the middle, she just got up and she started walking, rapidly walking around the monastery, around and around and around, and like she couldn't stop herself. She just so much energy. That's maybe the extreme case. Uh, but it is common for people to have bouts of intense energy, feeling like they can practice all day and all night. Which is not a bad thing, you know. It's not a bad thing to have good energy. Buddha said, Viryena Dukkha Majiti, through effort overcome suffering, but that effort has to be well directed. If you get caught up in the energy and just be pleased, if you're pleased by the energy you get lost in it. You lose track of your practice and you just sit there energetic and all. And we have adimoka, which is sadha, which is uh, Confidence or faith This is a common one A meditator will come and tell you that they're just I had a meditator today come and tell me They're very impressed with the practice And how great it is Some people, the common one here is a meditator Will uh, um, Start to make plans to ordain Or leave leave home uh, they'll, they'll start thinking about family and friends And wanting to spread the teaching to them this one's common. This, people, when you get to this certain stage, these things arise for the meditator. And the big one is confidence. And just this, they get really caught up in this great faith. Not even faith, but perfect confidence because of the results that they've seen. Even though it's only pre preliminary results, uh, they gain great confidence and get caught up in that. And during the, that time they get caught up and you get overconfident and then you stop meditating. You're sure, very sure of yourself and so you fail to be careful and uh, meticulous about the practice. It actually takes away from your practice. And we have upatana. The upatana is a little bit interesting. It's um, Upatana actually means mindfulness, which you would think would be a good one, but you know, this is the f this will be the first taste that the meditator has of being really and truly mindful, and so it'll, it'll easy, be easy for them to get caught up in that, in the sense of um, thinking suddenly that they're perfectly mindful, and and thus losing, or giving up the effort, or or failing to be again meticulous and and careful. It can also refer. Potentially to um, being mindful about the past and the future So some meditators will have memories about the past Even remembering past lives But mostly about early childhood and that kind of thing Memories that I thought were buried and were, were, were gone actually Didn't realize they still kept around Or again it'll be planning about the future Making plans and just this really sharp ability to Construct plans or or memories about the past. And the last one is Nikanti. And Nikanti is where you get... Uh, Nikanti means like desire. It's uh, when you like something. A very subtle sense of liking. Liking can be any of the other nine upakilesa, but it can also be something you see or hear, or smell or taste or feel or think. Nikanti, because the meditator is suddenly happy and so they have this subtle desire or liking of their situation. And because it's subtle, they may not note it. And they may go with it and get lost in it. Nikanti, subtle desire that you, you very hard to see, but if you're sitting there very pleased with yourself, 
very happy about your practice, you have to remember to note liking, liking. It's a common one at this stage. It's not liking something strongly, but it's a liking meditation, feeling happy about your practice and enjoying the practice, right? Because it takes away the, the sharp edge of mindfulness, the clarity. You start to get lazy and you start to get complacent. And you lose the present moment. So for all of these, there's, they're, they're, they're not an obstacle. Um, but they're, they're a distraction. And they have the potential to distract the meditator. I guess with everything, the, the bad things, the good things, it's all up to your mind. How you interact with them, how you respond to them. Meditation is about changing the way we look at things. Changing us. Changing the core of who we are. I was thinking... Um, trying to think of an analogy and it made me think of something and at first I couldn't think of what it was but then I realized it was the Borg there was this show uh, probably some of you heard of it called Star Trek and they had several versions of it but in one version there were these group of beings called the Borg and they would assimilate everyone, all, the, all the other beings I thought, well that, that's what I was thinking of when meditation is kind of like brainwashing or assimilating where kind of like a parasite you have this host and this host has all sorts of this has a real personality how how it relates is because we're not interested in the personality we're not interested in your experiences it's not like we're going to totally eradicate them but meditation is a whole new aspect of who you are it's creating habits that you may never have developed before so in a sense, it's creating a, a, a new entity in the in the host, and so everyone comes to meditation quite with quite different characters and personalities, and none of that's all that important. None of it. It's not. It's not going to change completely or disappear completely. But we're using this host like. Uh, like planting a seed in the earth but the seed is something quite different the seed of meditation for many people is something quite new and so you end up assimilated in a sense everyone will still look different, speak different, act different but we have something in common and that's all we're looking for all of these different experiences one might have all, because every meditator is different. If you see a thousand meditators, you'll have a thousand different conditions. Everybody's a little bit different. But none of that's really all that important in the meditation practice. So as a meditation teacher, you're not really concerned with any of the particulars of the individual. You're concerned with creating a seed, planting a seed. And growing and cultivating this seed, which is the seed of mindfulness, the seed of insight. And that's as meditators how sh we should approach our ourselves or approach our experience, to not get sidetracked by specific experiences or thoughts or character types, to not let our personality take over. So our personality can be good and it can be bad but it's always if we've never practiced insight meditation it's always made up of you know, worldly half-truths you know, so no matter how good and useful it might be practically speaking it can never truly be in touch with reality until we cultivate this you know, practice of mindfulness where we start to look perfectly objectively at things I'm just trying to explain uh, the, the key here is uh, not get caught up in who you are. Not get caught up in your views, your opinions, your emotions, your conceits, your identifications. 
not get caught up in your experiences, not get caught up in any of the good things that come. Try to be objective and have, have a pure state of mind during the practice. So, there you go. Some caution, some direction. I think that's one of the most important aspects of the practice is providing direction and, and correction when we start to get off track. So there you go. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them now. Do we have a full house tonight? This is probably our fullest yet. Good turnout. All right, well, if there are no questions, I wish you all a good night, and thank you for coming. <laughs>